We work to keep the message in front of the staff and the patients in multiple ways. All of the healthcare agencies and providers in the intervention communities use these materials so patients receive the same message, whether they were signing up for WIC, being visited by a home visitor, going to the dentist, having an ultrasound at the hospital, or seeing their provider in the office. And just the name of the initiative, repeated over and over in different settings, reinforced the main messages we were trying to get across. Several original patient education materials were developed, including this brochure of Every Week Counts. Uh, it talks about the importance of going to full term. Uh, and emphasizes that if there are no medical problems, it is best for the baby to deliver at 40 weeks, which is full term. And should the provider discuss delivering early, you should understand why. There are now several uh, similar patient education tools available from many sources, including March of Dimes. Uh, but it was not only the patients that we wanted to get these messages out to. We targeted public education and awareness using this toolkit. Uh, the messages you see here were key messages designed so that anyone could use them to talk about prematurity, the risks of delivering early, and the importance of brain development and going to full term. These toolkit materials were provided in English and Spanish and included fact sheets, handouts, a generic PowerPoint presentation on prematurity, sample letters to the editor, and many suggestions of ways to spread the message in the community. So staff working on Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait took these messages to health fairs, to high schools, prisons, beauty shops, businesses, church groups, anywhere they could get an audience. The vision was that all the people in the community around the pregnant woman, grandmothers, aunts, fathers, people you go to church with, coworkers, all of them would know about the importance of brain development in the last few weeks of pregnancy, the risks of delivering early, and would encourage that mother to go to full term if at all possible. So did the bundled multi-level interventions make a difference in our communities? Yes, and in fact, it made a difference in our entire state. We intentionally discussed Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait at every perinatal and professional meeting we could get to uh, in, once we started the project. And by the end of the second year of the project, Kentucky finally had a drop in our rate of preterm birth, and it was the largest drop of any of our contiguous states. While this is only an association, there were no other initiatives targeting preterm birth going on in the state at the time. So during the project period from 2007 to 2009, we continued to monitor the rates of preterm birth and late preterm birth. And you can see that by the end of 2009, we knew we were on the right track. The implementation sites uh, were reducing their rates and the uh, comparison sites were not. However, uh, the, by the end of 2009, when we were up to full speed on the project, those mothers didn't deliver until 2010. Next slide. And so you can see that in 2010, again, these are the deliveries from the moms who were uh, receiving services in 2009, we did see the maximal impact of the project, and we did have a reduction of 15% in premature, premature birth at our intervention sites. And the comparison sites uh, took on, began to implement Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait in January of 2010 at the, at the formal end of the project. Uh, and within a year, they were also headed in the right direction. Now, this is just one year's data for the comparison sites, and we're not willing to call that a trend, but certainly uh, we were pleased to see that it was headed in the right direction. Next slide. So what went well? Well, uh, certainly building the relationships and partnerships at all level was one of the strengths of this program. Uh, we did have to accept the fact that this integrated concept of bundled multi-level interventions required a different kind of evaluation than what we were used to. Uh, we did feel that by comparing best practices with current practices, we were able to help these communities identify their gaps and fill them in according to each community's need and move towards better systems of care. One of the most difficult but rewarding efforts was speeding up the time from research to practice, um, and so that they were implementing uh, what was in the research within a matter of months, not a matter of years. We did find that this, this uh, topic is one that people easily identify with and really engage and invest their efforts in prematurity prevention. And so motivation was not a difficult issue for us. And it did help us move the needle in Kentucky on reducing preterm birth. So what might we have done differently? Uh, we might have had a dedicated project coordinator at each site. Uh, we were really limited on budget and intentionally didn't pour a lot of money into these sites. And so the people who stepped up to coordinate the project were people who already had other full-time jobs. Um, we did have physician champions eventually at each site. Uh, it was a little bit difficult to get them on board, but it's absolutely essential for improving quality of care. Um, and again, you, can't, you can never have too much community involvement, and the community engagement really lifts the projects and helps motivate people. 
Uh, data collection is always a challenge, and we encourage uh, what we learned was that it's easiest to use data that is already existing and determine how you can use that to measure your progress. And celebrate, you need to celebrate even the small wins and always look for more opportunities to celebrate and increase the visibility of the project. So based on our initiative, we think keys to community-based prematurity prevention look something like this. Use your data to drive actions and whenever possible use existing data. Uh, put an emphasis on keeping up with the latest research and discuss how to implement it in the real world. You have to get people in communities out of their silos into building systems of care, but that's doable. Interventions have to go beyond the medical model to comprehensively address multiple determinants of health. And the results will come from building relationships, and therein we think lies the sustainability of this work. What we learned is that we can do better now with what we know. So moving forward, uh, Kentucky uh, did implement Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait in our control sites starting in 2010. In 2011, we added two additional sites so that we have several, several sites all across the state now working collaboratively. March of Dimes has adopted Healthy Babies Are Worth the Wait as an educational campaign and is also expanding to other program sites in New Jersey and Texas. So more information and materials are available from the March of Dimes. <laughs>